Hey friends, and welcome to my YouTube channel where today I am going to show you how to make the basket weave stitch. This is a great stitch. I've just used it on two projects, one of which being this beautiful basket weave rug. This rug was made using a brand new yarn from Lion Brand called Lazy Days. This yarn is so squishy. It is crazy soft. It is a 100% polyester yarn. And it is a number six super bulky yarn. The recommended needles for this yarn is a nine millimeter if you knit, if you crochet. The recommended hook for this yarn is also a nine millimeter. It is machine wash gentle tumble dry low. What I really like about this yarn is it is a tubular yarn, which means that this tube is sewn together and then it is filled with this polyester fiber. So it's really, really, really squishy and it's got a really great stretch to it. Now, because it's made that way, let me try to zoom all the way in. Can we get that? Let's see, there we go. Okay, so because it's made that way, it's more of a fabric yarn and not a fiber that you have to worry about possibly um, catching or pulling this yarn, which is nice. That makes it super durable and great for something like a rug. Once I was done making this and I saw just how squishy it was, was when I realized that this would also make a really great um, play mat for a baby. Um, this would be really nice to put um, like in, like say, say in your kid's room, you know, if you're sitting and you're playing, this would be something that's really nice to sit on instead of spending a whole bunch of money on those big giant um, floor pillows. This, it's so, so squishy, it's great. So. For today's tutorial, I will be using the Lazy Days Cover Story yarn to show you how to make this beautiful basket weave rug. So a little bit about the basket weave. So the basket weave is worked in multiples of eight plus two or multiples of eight plus six. Now, the reason for that is that if you work in multiples of eight, right, because it's four and four, plus two, what's going to happen is you are going to begin with a section that looks like this and you are going to end with a section that looks like this. If you work in multiples of eight plus six, what's gonna happen is you are going to begin with a section that looks like this and then you will also end with a section that looks like this. So it's really a bit of a preference as to whether or not you want the ends of your piece to end opposite or end the same. It also, because this yarn is so big, these four stitches, part of the repeat, the four and the eight, it it's, this is, this is huge. Like this is about two inches or so right here. So it's going to make a big difference in the size of your project as well. So if you're using this tutorial to create your own project, or if you're making this rug, but you wanna change it up a bit because you're using a different yarn, um, just keep in mind whether you're starting using eight plus eight plus two or eight plus six. And then the, the plus, the reason for the plus two or the plus six is that you're working it a multiple of eight and then you have to anchor the edges with, um, a, a half double crochet. So, so that's the plus two. And if you're doing eight plus six, the plus six is giving you these four extra stitches at the end plus the two half double crochet to anchor. If you are not following this pattern as the as it's written out exactly to make this rug, keep those multiples in mind so that this way you end your um, basket weave stitch the way that you would like it to and not, not incorrectly because it would look kind of weird if you know somehow you mix up a stitch count and you only ended with two. So just remember, eight plus four, or eight plus six. So I have gone ahead and I have created 14, cause that is eight plus six, 14 um, foundation double crochet stitches. So whatever pattern it is that you are following, you can go ahead and make your row one of foundation stitches for however many stitches the pattern calls out for. Then what you are going to do is turn and you are going to create a stacked single crochet in this first stitch. What the stacked single crochet does is it takes the place of a chain two and a half double crochet. I will show you here how to make a stacked single crochet in case you're unfamiliar with them, but they're really, really, really simple. So to make a stacked single crochet, you turn, you do not create a chain here. You're gonna insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over, 
pull up a loop so that you have two stitches on your hook, yarn over and pull through both. And that's essentially creating one single crochet. To make a stacked single crochet, what you're going to do is you're gonna come into this bar right here, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So you have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. And that is going to take the place of the chain two and half double crochet stitch. This is something that you can keep going with. So if you wanted to use this in place of a double crochet, you could insert your hook again into this bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through again. And that's just going to keep giving you more height. And this is about the height of a double crochet, again, depending on your tension. So you could play around with this a little bit. Um, and use it on other projects. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm using it here and you are doing what this, what I call one stacked single crochet, but it is two single crochets on top of each other. Okay. Then what we are going to do is we are going to create four front post double crochet. So this is the first part of the repeat. So we will yarn over, insert our hook from front to back and back around to the front, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that creates your first front post double crochet. You are going to repeat that three more times for a total of four front post double crochets. And then we are going to create four back post double crochets. So to do that, we are going to yarn over, insert our hook from back to front to back, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two again. We will repeat that again three more times for a total of four back post double crochet stitches. And that, that is the eight stitch repeat. Now, to, now, if you were following along for my scarf, that would be the end of the repeat and you would be placing a half double crochet in the next stitch. But for the rug here, we have to again, create four more front post double crochet stitches. Which will then leave us with one remaining stitch and in that stitch, we are going to place a half double crochet to anchor our repeat. So that is row two for this repeat. We will now turn, create a stacked single crochet again in this first stitch because this is taking the place of the chain two and a half double crochet. It's gonna give you a much, much nicer edge. And then here, because now we've flipped, we are going to work back post double crochets in these front post double crochets from the second row. So what we will do is we are gonna yarn over and then working from the back to the front and back to the back, we will insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Repeat that three more times for three more back post double crochets for a total of four back post double crochets. And then when we come to this next set of what was done as back post double crochets, they now look like front post double crochets. We are going to create four front post double crochets again by yarning over, placing our hook from front to back to front, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Create three more front post double crochets in these back post double crochets for a total of four front post double crochet, which will complete the repeat. And then finish off this row again by working four back post double crochets in what was created as front post double crochets from row two. And then when you reach your final stitch, which is the stacked single crochet from row two, you are going to place a half double crochet in that stitch. So if you look closely, you could see by creating the stacked single crochets, it makes it very obvious where to work your stitch because it looks like 
um, a half double crochet at the top. So place your half double crochet, turn. This is now moving on to row four. So create your stacked single crochet in the first stitch. And now we have what looks like all front post double crochets here. So we are going to create four front post double crochets in this in these first four stitches. Create four back post double crochet in the next four stitches. Coming back to the last set of stitches, we are going to create four front post double crochet in these last four front post, uh, back post stitches. Create a half double crochet in the final stitch. This is the only point in the pattern that it deviates slightly. So this was four rows that we worked, but only three of them use the post stitches. The rest of the repeat, you are going to be doing four rows um, for each repeat section. The reason for that is because this first row here with, with um, these three front posts gives you enough height where if I, let me show you. So where did I start? Where did I start? Let's see. So right here, if I had um, done my foundation row and then and then done four rows of the post stitches, this would be quite a bit taller than the rest of the post stitch sections within the basket weave. So I omit one set of post stitches in this first little section here. Every other set is a total of four repeats before you flip your stitches. So let me show you how to flip your stitches now. So this is going to be row five in the pattern. You're going to turn, place a stacked single crochet as we have been in this first stitch. And then instead of placing four back post double crochet, we are going to place four front post double crochet. Now this first set here can sometimes be a little bit tricky to do. It's easy using this super bulky yarn. Um, if you are using a lighter weight yarn to do the basket weave, they might be a little bit more difficult um, at first to get your hook around to create the posts when you, when you flip them. Um, but once you get that first row flipping them, then the remaining three sets of post stitches for this row, for this section of the repeat are easy. But it's just a, the initial flipping of them can be a bit of a pain to get your hook around and, and pull them over. So that is creating four front post double crochet in the four front post double crochet here, but because we are working along the other side, it's opposite. Now what we are going to do is we are going to create four back post double crochet in this next set. So again, we're, make, we're working four back post double crochet in four back post double crochet, but because we're on the opposite side of our work, they look like front post double crochet. And this is what is going to begin to develop the basket weave look that um, we have on this finished rug. So four back post double crochet. And now this next set, we are going to be flipping. So we're gonna do four front post double crochet. And then when we reach our final stitch, we are going to place our usual half double crochet in the last stitch. And you can see it's starting to flip. So that completes row five. And to do row six, we are going to turn, place a stacked single crochet in the first stitch. And then we are going to place four back post double crochet in these first four stitches. And then after we complete those four back post double crochet, we are going to create four front post double crochet in each of the next four stitches. And 
And after we complete those, we will place four back post double crochet in each of the next four stitches. When we reach the end, we will place our half double crochet in our stacked single crochet, turn, and repeat that row two more times. Okay, so I have just completed my fourth row with the stitches flipped, and you can see here that the basket weave is starting to form. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn and I'm gonna switch back my stitches again. So first we create the uh, stack single crochet in the first stitch and because I've created um, four sets of post stitches I'm going to now flip to the opposite post so these were back posts now they look like front posts so I'm going to flip to a back post and you work that in the next four stitches And now these next four stitches that look from this side look like back posts. We are going to flip them by creating a front post. And then in these next four stitches that look like front posts, we are going to flip them and create them into back posts. As we come to the end of our row, we are going to place our half double crochet, and then we will turn and repeat that back across. So you're gonna repeat that row four more times before you flip your stitches again to keep creating the basket weave all the way up. And I love this stitch because it is reversible. So it's the same on both sides, which is really nice because then you don't have to worry about right sides and wrong sides if say your rug, something gets spilt on your rug on one side and you end up with a stain, you could very easily flip it over. Because this stitch is reversible, I also just used it on a scarf pattern, which is really nice this way when you wrap the scarf up nice, when it's nice and chilly and you wanna double wrap it a few times, you don't have to worry about a right side or a wrong side. It looks great on both sides because it's identical. They're just flipped. So here you see what looks like your all front posts, even though it's a combination, and then the back over here looks like it's all back posts, and you know, vice versa. So I love this stitch, it's a great stitch. It's got a lot of stretch to it. So I did not um, steam block my rug, but if you did steam block this, it would open up um, quite a bit and probably lay a little bit more flat. Um, so just be mindful of that. When I did steam out the scarf that I made, it almost, it, gosh, it close to doubled in length, guys. Like it, it seriously, it got, it got so big. Now, I don't know if that was necessarily the yarn or the stitch. I think it was more, it more had to do with the yarn because this yarn doesn't have the type of stretch like the yarn that I used on the scarf, but this stitch does open up quite a bit when you steam it. So be mindful of that if you decide to use this for something like, um, a blanket or a garment, it's gonna it's gonna grow. So steam block your swatches if you are using something different than what I designed this pattern for. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you. Please make sure to like and subscribe so that this way you never miss any of my free patterns and video tutorials, along with also yarn reviews now. I'm going to be doing a ton of those because I am trying to break out of my box and try tons of new things. For example, this yarn, I am normally not somebody who likes to pick up a super bulky, but man, guys, this quick project was such a satisfying make and it was a total palette cleanser for me because I've been working on some smaller, well, not smaller projects, big projects with smaller yarn and this was just such a good win to finish something really quick, quite literally in a weekend. So big yarns, loving them, definitely out of my wheelhouse. So stay tuned for more video tutorials, free patterns, and yarn reviews.